Since 1928, when Steamboat Willie first came out, people have been so interested in the star Mickey Mouse himself, along with going to Walt Disney World and Disneyland theme parks for many decades. To honor this mouse making many families and children happy for over 50 years at this point in time, Disney World needed to start temporary construction dedicated to honor the success of Mickey Mouse. Intentionally though, this land they were planning to build wasn't necessarily supposed to open as a permanent place to go in the Magic Kingdom. It was mainly to celebrate Mickey's 60th anniversary, which is why it was able to be built in only 90 days, which was a short amount of time for construction at Walt Disney World. When construction ended, it was originally called Mickey's Birthday Land in 1988 when it first opened. Mickey was willing to invite everyone to celebrate with him as he wrote, Hi kids, it's me, you know, Mickey Mouse. Boy, have I got surprises for you. I'm having a whale of a birthday party, and I'm just waiting for you to get here. I also hear Minnie's cooked up a few surprises of her own. Here's a special invitation for you and your grown-ups. So board the Walt Disney World Railroad at either Main Street or Frontierland, and I'll see you in Mickey's birthday land. I guess this is my big chance to finally meet you in person. Love, Mickey Mouse. But it was still open to the public way longer than just Mickey's 60th anniversary since it became so popular. Two years after it opened, the name changed on May 26, 1990 to Mickey Starland when they added characters to meet from DuckTales, Tailspin, and Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. Mickey Starland was the name for this land in both California and Florida parks. But Mickey can only have one home, right? So the name was changed to Mickey's Toontown in Disneyland in 1993. Then it was finally settled as Mickey's Toontown Fair in 1996 after eight years of success in the Florida park, which is what we are more focused on in this video. Mickey's Toontown Fair was considered Mickey and his friends' vacation home, while Mickey's Toontown in Disneyland was considered his actual home with his friends. This land, the smallest land among the other ones in Disney World at the time, which were Adventureland, Fantasyland, Tomorrowland, and Frontierland, along with Main Street USA and Liberty Square. It was a separation between Fantasyland and Tomorrowland. What did this vacation town look like? Well, it had... The Barnstormer at Goofy's Wessaker Farm, Walt Disney World Railroad, Mickey's Country House, Minnie's Country House, The Judge's Tent, Donald's Boat, Toontown Hall of Fame, and for shopping, they had Cornelius Coots County Bounty, Mickey's Toontown Fair Souvenirs, and Toontown Farmer's Market. Actually, I found a picture of me in Mickey's Toontown Fair. Look at me, I was so cute. I think that was from 2009, 2008? I think 2009. Anywho, to be quite honest with you, for the 15 years this land was open, no big events were really going on there. It was basically just a place to take pictures and maybe grab a quick snack. Although this was considered one of the lands, if you think about it, you couldn't really spend that long there and there was really nothing for adults. It was more of a focus towards young children. The other lands had way more to offer than Mickey's Toontown Fair, which this is probably the reason the land started to go downhill. In September 2009, at the D23 Expo in Anaheim, California, it was announced that Fantasyland would be expanded for the Disney Princess and Disney Fairies characters, along with a larger three-ring circus area for the Dumbo the Flying Elephant attraction. This would be known as Storybook Circus, a part of the new Fantasyland which would be fully open in fall of 2012. The curse on new Fantasyland had been broken. Everyone in the Magic Kingdom was overjoyed, except... When I rule this place, things might not be so happily ever after. 
Ariel, trust me. In my version, the octopus wins. And Belle, maybe that tale as old as time needs a new twist. Ah, but you, you're perfect just the way you are. Stay angry, my friend. Save it. Soon they'll all know why. I'm called the Evil Queen. Experience Disney storytelling like never before in New Fantasyland at the Walt Disney World Resort. Discover all the new wonders at FindingFantasyLand.com. Seriously? What was going to be added was a meet and greet slash walkthrough attraction with Belle from Beauty and the Beast inside of her father's cottage, and this would be by the Be Our Guest restaurant. A meet and greet with Ariel from The Little Mermaid. A meet and greet with Cinderella. A meet and greet with Tinkerbell inside an elaborate pixie hollow area borrowed from Disneyland. A meet and greet with Snow White and Aurora in their own dedicated cottages. A new dark ride based on The Little Mermaid duplicated from the under construction one at Disney California Adventure and one of today's most popular rides at Walt Disney World, The Seven Dwarfs Mine Train but this meant shutting down the gang's vacation land. So sadly, on February 11th, 2011, Mickey's Toontown Fair was closed for good. The night of the closing, many people tried to stay in the land for as long as they could. They basically stayed there until a cast member kicked them out. They stayed and watched the Wishes fireworks, Guests also kept asking if Mickey could come out and say goodbye, but cast members told them he was too busy making a cheesecake or packing his bags to leave his vacation home. Even though many miss Mickey's Toontown Fair, them making way for the new Fantasyland was probably the better decision anyway. Many today love the new attractions there, and many fans have ranked Fantasyland as their favorite land in Disney World. As successful the new Fantasyland may be, Mickey's Toontown Fair will always have a special place in our hearts.